on November 26th? Okay. 2018, The Haunted Mansion turns 15 years old, and in celebration of its 15th anniversary that for some reason came to theaters in November instead of October, I am going to be reviewing the movie. By the light, by the light, where's the key, where's the key, where's the, key? Where's the beautiful key, find the key, find the key, oh how happy you'll be. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review The Haunted Mansion! Ooh. Anniversary Reviews! So The Haunted Mansion is directed by Rob Minkoff, who also brought you The Lion King, the two short little movies, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and... The Forbidden Kingdom? Hmm. And the film does star Eddie Murphy, Terrence Stamp, Wallace Shawn, and many more. So, The Haunted Mansion is about this realtor. He, his wife, and his children, they all go to this mansion. And when they go to this mansion, this realtor finds out that his wife apparently looks like the old girlfriend of Mr. Gracie and there's a whole mystery surrounding that old girlfriend. So before I review The Haunted Mansion, Kevin Falk is going to be reviewing the movie. So Kevin, take it away. Thank you, Tony, and hey guys, it's Kevin again. Happy Halloween to all of you. The Haunted Mansion overall. Uh, this is a film I was actually very excited in revisiting, but I was also very worried about. Why? Because the last time I saw this film, I was about like eight or nine years old. I haven't really not seen it since then. Uh, I was a fan of it as a kid. It was one that I didn't really watch a lot, admittedly, but it is one that I did enjoy. Similar to Hocus Pocus, this was one where I was worried that it was not going to be as good as I thought, that it wasn't going to hold up, and while that wasn't the case for Hocus Pocus, it sadly is the case for The Haunted Mansion. This is a very obnoxious and boring film, in my personal opinion, that really doesn't hold up at all for me upon rewatch. As much as I do hate this movie, there are actually some positives here and there, and a lot of that does actually reside in the acting. I do think there is some good acting here. Eddie Murphy, he does the best with what he can do here. His character, on the other hand, we'll get to a little bit later, but he does do a good job at the physical comedy, and some of his reactions I did think were pretty funny. You know, like I said, he's doing the best with what he can do here. He's very limited, so it's not nearly as good of a role as Murphy usually is. Um, but I do think that he was fine here for the most part, and, you know, definitely, compared to a lot of the other things going on in this movie, he's definitely, uh, good for what he had here. And then the other two performances that I will give in this movie that I did actually think were really good, uh, Terrence Stamp as the character of Ramsley, I actually did really like here. He is this very sort of mysterious and creepy butler of the, uh, mansion. We don't really know too much about him, but every time he's on screen, I did actually think the movie got a little bit better. I did actually think he did a good job in giving this movie this very creepy sort of vibe, and again, this isn't necessarily a horror film, but I do think he did a good job at, you know, doing what he needs to do, and I thought, uh, the other actor I really like was Nathaniel Parker. I thought he did a good job as, uh, the character of, uh, Master Edward Gracie. He is the owner of the mansion, and he actually has a tragic backstory, and the story itself we'll get to a little bit later, but I did think he did a good job in elevating a lot of the material, and I did like what he had to do here. So, while I did like those three performances in the movie, the rest of the cast here, no. The rest of the cast here was really bad, especially when it comes to Marsha Thompson, who plays uh, Eddie Murphy's wife in the film, and I thought she was terrible here. I could not stand her in this movie. Not only was she so wooden and emotionless at times, but she just didn't really do anything to elevate the material. At least those three actors that I mentioned did elevate the material. She, on the other hand, I think worsened the material, especially in scenes where she has to be emotional. It just really does not work at 
at all. I really was not a fan of her in this movie. You do not see any chemistry between her and Eddie Murphy. It's definitely not there at all. And honestly, for me, I think out of everyone in this movie, she for sure gave the worst performance. In scenes where she's supposed to be funny, she comes across as annoying. In scenes where she's supposed to be emotional, she comes across as wooden. Just everything about her, I really couldn't stand in this movie. Same goes for the two kids in this film. I thought both of them were pretty bad. And lastly, Jennifer Tilly in this movie is fucking atrocious. I mean, she's really hamming it up here as, like, the woman in the crystal ball, and I understand that's, like, the part, but I really thought that she was uh, hamming it up here too much, and I really was not a fan of her. Really, the cast overall, I think, is pretty bad. It's really just those three actors that do uh, elevate it for me. And now we get to the thing that I think really does uh, put a dampener on this one. That is the directing and the writing, which... And it makes me really sad because the director of this movie is actually a very competent director who has made things like the Stuart Little films and... I, uh, you know, other things like that. He made The Lion King. He's the director of The Lion King. He was the animator for The Little Mermaid. He did the pre-production for Beauty and the Beast. So the fact that I can, I'm coming on here and saying that Rob Minkoff is one of the worst things about this movie is very surprising to me because I do actually think he is a very good director. The problem with this movie is he had no way how to go about it. I mean, the directing here, the choice for this movie to be a comedy, it just really does not work at all. There's nothing funny about it. It's very LCD in that regard, and I don't think really anyone is going to find this funny. I think mostly it's just going to be for very little kids, and that's kind of it. And again, it wouldn't be a problem if the film wasn't so tonally inconsistent, but it really is, because for a lot of this film, it is a comedy, but whenever we focus on the Gracie character, uh, it becomes a lot more dramatic and gothic-like, and those two tones do not go together at all. It feels very tonally inconsistent, it doesn't really seem to have much of a focus, and again, it really is due to Minkoff's directing here, and I really was not a fan of it at all. At all, but the writing especially uh, doesn't help. I mean, the writing as well is really bad here. Right off the bat, I will say right now, the biggest problem with this film for me is how much it is trapped in the early 2000s. I mean, everything about this movie just screams early 2000s to me, between the really horrendous dialogue in this film, the really poor character development, but the first thing I really do want to talk about, like I said, is how much of a story this film is really lacking, because the film starts off, and the only story we really have going on is that Eddie Murphy plays this guy who, like, he likes to, he sells houses to people, and this is one of the ones that he's going to check out to see if, you know, it should be sold, and maybe he would possibly, you know, try to sell that house, and... Just from that premise alone, the second they get to this house, I mean, you know there's something off about it. You know that they shouldn't be there, and he keeps saying it's going to be like two minutes tops or whatever. You know for sure that, no, this is this is going to last a lot longer than that. It's very predictable in that sense. You know from the second they're going to be there that all these things are going to go wrong with the house. And from that point on, once they enter the house, nothing of interest really happens. We see things here and there. Like, we'll see things going on, and you know something is off, but... It takes so long for anything of interest to happen in this movie, and I wouldn't have a problem with that if these characters were somewhat compelling, but they are absolutely not. Eddie Murphy, as much as he does elevate the role, the character itself, forget it. There's nothing to him. I mean, this guy is so dumb. He's so naive in that sense. There are so many times where it's like, why can't you just leave? But they keep giving him reasons as to why he needs to stay. I really could not stand him at all. The wife as well, uh, I thought was very annoying. And the two kids, my god, the two kids in this movie are so annoying here. It's not just because of the actors, but the kids themselves are really bad. The son especially, I thought, that was annoying. I mean, there's literally, his introduction scene in this movie is literally that he has a fear of killing a bug, and we have this really serious scene where Eddie Murphy is telling him to face, the fe face his fears and kill that fly if he needs to, and I wish I was joking, but they take this so deadly seriously. It's like, you guys are literally talking about killing a bug. Like, it's not really something that you need to take all that seriously, but they do, and I don't think that approach worked here at all. 
But then once the kids get into the house, that's really when they started to annoy me. Because even though you can tell there is something off here and that there's something very, there's a very creepy vibe going on, uh, they for some reason decide to explore the house. And I will say the sister at first didn't annoy me as much. She's a little bit more level-headed. But even she gets coaxed into doing it. And it's like, no, why would you do this? Why are you that dumb? And I just... I didn't understand why I decided to do this, and this family overall, you don't care about them, they're not interesting, and a lot of this film is very much gag after gag for a while, like Murphy will run into, like I said, Jennifer Tilly as the crystal ball, and something really freaky will happen, and it just, you know, that, that happens, or he'll run into these, like, garden gnomes singing, and that happens, or he'll run into this really strange room, and it just... A lot of times, it really does feel like you're going through a theme park, and I know this is based off a theme park ride, but that's really what this feels like. It doesn't feel like a cohesive story. It feels like a film that just has no idea where it wants to go with its premise, and I think that really does show here. It's not till Gracie comes into the film where the movie actually starts to have more of a plot. And the plot in general just does not work in this movie. It is far too dark from what the rest of this movie was trying to set up. I mean... You have this whole side of the film, like I said, that's very comical and silly, but then when you get to his stuff, it's this really tragic, uh, almost um, gothic backstory, and it really does not work with this film at all. Because it's PG, they can't really dive into it all that much, and it's not even really that interesting of a story. It's a story we've seen so many times before, and they spend so much time on it in the third act, and it just got really boring for me. There were so many other directions I think they could have gone with this story. There's so many interesting things you can explore, but they just choose not to, and that's really what bugged me about this film, is that there are things on display here that could be really interesting. And the gags are really not funny at all. There's a whole sequence where there are these um, like garden gnomes or whatever, and they're singing like they're singing like 40 songs, and it gets really annoying after a while. I really can't recall one time in this movie where I actually laughed. It, it really just annoyed me throughout most of it. The climax especially feels uh, very much rushed, but the cinematography, let's talk about that, because it was the early 2000s, and I understand that some of it isn't going to be up to par with what it would have looked like today, but this is definitely one of those films where I think if it would come out now, it would definitely be a lot better, because a lot of the graphics here, uh, they really don't hold up at all. Um, there's a lot of CGI here that looks pretty bad. Some of it, like I will say, the look of the mansion is correct. The way the mansion does look, a lot of the details, they did a good job, I think, with giving it the uh, necessary, you know, uh, look that it does need. Like, the interior design, it looks fine. I do think that it actually looks pretty good, and there were definitely some things I did like about the actual design. It's really just the CGI that really doesn't look good at all, and a lot of times it took me out of this movie, so I can't even really say that's much of a positive. The score, I do actually like. I do actually think the score is really good to this movie, and the editing, like I said, the movie itself is way too short, um, and and it's mainly because of how it goes about its story. It takes so long for anything to happen that the last 20 minutes feels so rushed. And it feels like we're just, we're finally getting to like the mean potatoes of something. And then it just ra abruptly wraps up. And I do think that was a huge mistake in the films, uh, you know, in regard to this film. I understand that it's a Disney film and they want to appeal to kids. But it, the way the story ends up playing out, this is not something that kids should be watching. This is not something that kids probably would even care all that much about, and the movie seems to think that, and that's what really makes it so bizarre. It's a very bizarre watch overall, because you have all this really dumb juvenile humor, and then suddenly you have a scene of someone talking about, like, suicide or something like that, and like I said, those two halves just do not correlate at all, and that's really what does bring this film down a lot. The Haunted Mansion is definitely not one of the worst things I've seen in uh, children's entertainment. There's definitely Definitely way worse live action films like this out there for sure, but it still is a pretty terrible film that really doesn't seem to have much of a focus whatsoever. I really didn't like Haunted Mansion at all. I really hated it, and I am going to give the Haunted Mansion, sadly, a D+.
that's really it for uh, my portion of the review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out my channel, of course. You know, I've been on Tony's channel numerous times. Uh, but this was definitely a very interesting review for sure. Hopefully, Christmas time, we actually get to review something that I enjoy because it's been a long time since I've done a collab review on Tony's channel for something I actually do enjoy. Um, and hopefully, Christmas does make up for that. But uh, anyway, of course, thank you for having me on. And now, Tony, back to you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing The Haunted Mansion. So The Haunted Mansion is a film I remember watching in theaters like it was yesterday and really liking it obviously as a kid. I even do still have this bus that I got from McDonald's back when the movie came out. There's certain movies where you watch them as a child and when you revisit them when you're older, sometimes they hold up for you very well and then sometimes they don't hold up for you very well. And yeah, honestly, now that I'm older, this movie doesn't really hold up, unfortunately, because I remember having very fond memories of it, just watching it, not just in the theater, but even rewatching it at home. Not that this is a bad movie, in my opinion. I know this is a movie that has gotten really bad reviews. And of course, I do think it's understandable why anyone would hate the movie. I'm just personally not on that level with The Haunted Mansion. I think it's a perfectly okay movie. It's perfectly okay. It's not good. It's not bad, at least in my opinion. It's just, you know, it's a movie. It's disposable. I can have some fun with it, but not really something I think much of after it's over. While there's definitely way worse family entertainment out there for me, there's definitely way better family entertainment out there. I'll go ahead and start off with what I did still enjoy about this movie. I still liked Eddie Murphy. I'm a big Eddie Murphy fan. I really like the dude. He's so charismatic. He's so likable. He is so, so energetic. And when it comes to the Haunted Mansion, that is no different. He gives a very energetic and a very fun performance. And you could tell he's absolutely committed. And he is easily my favorite performance in this movie. I truly do think he is an absolute blast to watch on screen. As for the actress that plays the wife, and the actress is Marsha Thomason. I think she's wooden. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think she's that good. I don't think she's necessarily like the most awful thing, but she's not really that strong when it comes to her line delivery. The kids, on the other hand, uh, I didn't think they were too bad. I thought the kids, for what they needed to do, they were pretty good. You know, they're the usual kids that may do something dumb and whatever, but they didn't necessarily get on my nerves. So there's that at least. So I think they definitely tried. Terrence Stamp, although I question his character, I'll, I'll admit he's good. I liked him quite a bit. You could tell he's having a lot of fun. You could tell he's really eating up this role. And I definitely have to commend the guy for being so committed. Nathaniel Parker also looked like he was having a lot of fun as Master Gracie. I thought he was a lot of fun to watch here. And then you also can't go wrong with Wallace Shawn and Dina Waters who play these ghosts. And I thought for what they had in the film, they were definitely a lot of fun. So really, aside from the wife, who I thought was probably the weakest performance looking back on it, I thought everyone else was actually not too bad. And before I forget, I thought Jennifer Tilly as this globe was actually really fun. Now, if you have seen my movie reviews for Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky, you know I'm not exactly the biggest Jennifer Tilly fan, at least when it comes to those movies in particular. In The Haunted Mansion, yeah, she was a lot of fun. I. I have to be honest, you don't see her that much in the movie, but when Jennifer Tilly does show up, I'm not going to lie, she actually brought a smile to my face because of how much fun she's having with the globe, and I just enjoyed that character in general. I found that character to just be very interesting. And something else that I have to give The Haunted Mansion is the direction, Rob Minkoff. Uh, I thought 
Actually, the direction wasn't too bad. He had pretty good camera work, and I did really enjoy the overall production design, particularly when we go inside this mansion. It is a very cool looking mansion. I felt like I was in this mansion, and the cinematography for the movie is pretty good too. And then there's these bus. Uh, in the movie, they only appear briefly for two scenes, and I have to say I really enjoyed them. Now, this movie did a clever job of not overusing them. If they overuse these busts that you see in the movie, then yeah, I could have hated these characters in all honesty. But this movie does a good job of literally cutting away from these busts once they were going to start to really get irritating. Like once it got to that point, okay, is this going to get irritating now? They, they cut away and that's smart of them. But unfortunately... Uh, yeah, there, there's still problems with this movie. I have to say my biggest problem is how they handle the story uh, with Mr. Gracie's old girlfriend because the whole story is that Sarah looks like the old girlfriend from Mr. Gracie's past. Like, she looks exactly like her. And Terrence Stamp's character is trying to make Mr. Gracie believe that it's her. So there's this whole thing where Mr. Gracie is trying to literally take her away from the family. And I thought how that whole entire element was executed here. It was really ridiculous. And I don't know why they felt to need to really shoehorn that into the story anyway. Ways. And I think that's what really did take away the fun factor of the Haunted Mansion after a while. Because I'm not going to lie, when the movie started, I took it as this fun, cheesy movie. Like, you know me, I like some good old nice cheese, like Hocus Pocus. That's a very cheesy Halloween type of movie, but I really enjoy it. And Haunted Mansion, while it started off as that nice, cheesy, fun family movie, because I did really like the atmosphere it set up, after a while, it just comes off as just tiresome. It starts to take itself a little bit more seriously with fun moments that would happen here and there. But it's like, once we get to the second half of the movie, it just completely forgot uh, the kind of movie it was making. Like, at that point, is it trying to be a movie that appeals to kids? Or is the movie that's just trying to appeal more to the adults? Because considering, um, suicide is a topic in this movie, I don't know if I could always say every scene in this movie is exactly family friendly, but yeah, I just felt like the movie really lost itself. Also, visually, I wasn't very impressed for the most part. The ghosts, I think they looked not too bad, and I even liked the character designs on the ghosts. You know, visually, I liked how Jennifer Tilly looked as the globe, but there's a lot, and I'm saying, and I'm talking like a lot of noticeable green screen in this movie, and you can absolutely tell that wow, the, they really could have polished up the green screen so much more. Some decisions that some of the characters make aren't exactly the smartest. Some of the decisions they make, you kind of understand, but then they make other choices and you're like, oh, come on, you have to really go there. You really just have to kind of make that choice too. While I did think that the movie started off actually pretty funny like I laughed a good chunk as it kept going and going I just found myself not laughing as much the humor just felt really stale really tiresome just really wasn't as enjoyable as it was when the movie started out like maybe for like the first like good 30 minutes in my opinion uh, I was actually laughing a lot and then it just dives deeper into what I just said the whole thing with Mr. Grace's old girlfriend and I just felt like the movie completely lost that nice fun sense it could have been it's kind of soulless honestly i really thought about it after i was done watching the movie it is kind of soulless there's times where it's really having fun and when it is being goofy and fun i liked it but then when it starts to not be that it starts to become more of this pretty soulless movie it just really took me out of the moment and it's disappointing because there could have been so much more to this movie and you could tell there's passion in this movie i felt the passion personally i felt there was a lot they were trying to do with this movie but just where it kept going and going specifically in the second half 
it really just fell flat for me personally. And then the climax of the movie was just so rushed and just where everything kind of wraps up from there. Just had me going, what? And I do think the editing in this movie personally is very, very choppy. There were some times where they really did cut very, very quick to the next scene and they cut very quick to the other scene. And yeah, I did find the editing to be very distracting because of how choppy it does get at points. And as for Terrence Stamp's character, as much as I really liked him. His motivation to really get Mr. Gracie to believe Sarah is his old girlfriend like from the past. I thought that was just really stupid. This movie really did not need to go in this direction. Like I get they wanted to try something but still it didn't really work. The good thing is this movie is only an hour and 20 minutes so it doesn't overstay its welcome for too too long. But I still did feel the length at points. But thankfully, it's not longer than that because I have a feeling if this movie was, for example, one hour and 40 minutes or something like that, then I probably could have liked it a lot less. But uh, just when I was about to get a little bit more, you know, tired with the film, it does end. Overall, The Haunted Mansion, while yes, there is fun to be had, well, it started out as really, really fun. Uh, and then the fun factor just started to just dip down and down. It is disappointing that it doesn't really hold up. It's just at the end of the day an okay disposable movie. It just feels like at the end of the day they had no idea where to really go with this movie. It's not really that consistent with this tone either and that really is a bummer. So I'm going to give The Haunted Mansion two and a half out of four stars. So everybody in the comments down below let me know what did you think about The Haunted Mansion and I want to thank Kevin Falk so much for coming here to review The Haunted Mansion with me. Very cool dude, very cool channel, does a lot of TV reviews, movie reviews, he does movie previews, I guest star in the movie previews once in a while on his channel, collab reviews, he does a ton of great stuff on his channel if you want to check it out I will leave a link in the description down below. Low. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!